Hi there, my name's Sarah Gordon. Hi everyone, my name's Annie Clark. And this is our fifth session, um, during which we are going to talk, give you some final hints and tips with regards to online training. So, Annie, what are your final hints and tips? So I think hint number one is to make sure that you're talking slightly slower than you would do in a face-to-face -face session and making sure that you're talking as clearly as possible. And that then comes through to the instructions that you give. We mentioned on a previous video, you're gonna to need to give instructions at least twice when you're doing online and maybe even write them in the chat function as well so that people have got that clarity around what you're asking them to do. The other thing that I find works really well in online sessions is to use people's names even more than you would do in a face-to-face -face session. And also what you want to be doing is lavishing them with praise as well, so that if they're perhaps feeling slightly reluctant to contribute, they get that positive affirmation and hopefully they'll, be, uh, they'll feel com more comfortable to contribute moving forward. The, other technique that I think is really important is to get your participants to prove that they can use the technology. So early on in the session, getting them to write hello in the chat box, getting them to put their hands up, all of that is really important and will help your session run smoothly. And the final thing that I would add is it's really important to make sure that you're still build, building in reflection and recapping. So on a face-to-face -face training session, I would always advocate your session being about 20% reviewing, recapping or reflecting. And there's nothing to stop you as an online trainer, just getting people to take 60 seconds to write down any notes or reflections. So make sure that you bring in creative ways to do that as well. Sarah, how about you? What's, what's some final hints and tips? Okay, so to build on that glorious array that you just gave us, Annie. I know, um, <laughs> so um, I think in terms of, um, Proving, getting people to prove that they can use the technology so you also know who might need an extra hand mm -hmm. without embarrassing them is key. And that's something where at the beginning of the session, it's quite nice to get everybody to turn their videos on if they have a video um, and just to wave at one another um, and to use that. So get, when you get people to do their introductions, actually getting them to do that over the video and then get them to turn their videos off perhaps if you don't need to use them, because that of course then saves on bandwidth, et cetera, especially if people are having to uh, <clears throat> share their bandwidth with children or partners, et cetera, who might be working in the same household. So um, that sort of almost initial screenshot of lots of lovely faces waving, um, or perhaps as well, one thing that we've been doing recently is getting people to hold up how many days they've been in isolation. Oh you know stuff like that which again uh -huh. just builds a bit of camaraderie um amongst the team so that would be that would be tip number one um then secondly just to reiterate exactly what you just said about speaking really clearly and repeating the instructions numerous times um and i think that comes back to um you know when you're asking somebody to contribute to a discussion state what the discussion is about then request that this person perks their ears up finds the unmute button state the question again engage them in discussion state the question again and bring somebody else into the discussion so you're just reiterating it um, and as you say showering praise on them say thank you so much for contributing that's mm -hmm. that's absolutely fantastic um, and then the final thing i'd say as well is um, if you can finish early so if you know that you're going to run, well, you, you run out of material perhaps, um, think twice before trying to fill that mm -hmm. space until the end of the session um, and, and almost give people the option. You know, it's like we could do a final exercise now if you'd like, or we can gift you some time back because actually this is something where despite the fact that we're all working from home, um, we don't have that commute, et cetera. Time is still really precious. Mm. And so making sure that people have got that space to be able to go and, um, and care for their families, et cetera, is really important. So I think that's something there where if you can either gift people time back, but then secondly as well, in your breaks, make them substantial breaks. 
So if you're training people for an entire day, give them half an hour breaks in the morning and afternoon and a proper hour for lunch. Mm -hmm. Don't think that just because you're online, you can squeeze those breaks to make them smaller because yeah. lots of people might having, be having to cook lunch or something like that for their family. So they need to know, okay, from 12 to one, that is when I actually get a proper break if that's the standard of your course. So I guess to encapsulate that, that's all about um, build those breaks in and be acutely aware that people, despite the fact that they're working from home, time is still a precious commodity. So gift that to them. Hmm. That's fantastic. I love those ideas. I've written them all down. <laughs> well, ditto, Annie Clark. I will be copying yours unashamedly. Um, so uh, brilliant. Thank you very much, Annie. It's been really lovely speaking to you over the last five little videos that we've done and uh, hopefully there'll be some more soon. Sarah Double Wave. Bye. <laughs>